Hey guys, so in this set of videos, we're going to be going into the local lead explosion. We're going to show you how to find the keywords, the long tail keywords that we need to set up our site. Chris Marshall is going to come on. We're going to he's going to show us how to actually use the software, um, how to put the site together, and then we're going to uh, go into how to set up the retargeting. Uh, how to drop a uh, retargeting cookie on people's computers, how to set up our campaign, how to set up our list, how to use our list in the in the retargeting process. Now, I know Mike went into this a little bit in his videos, but I just want to um, talk a little, little bit more about the strategy that we're going to be doing. Um, so, for example, we're, the product that we're, gonna, we're going to be going after and trying to sell is Elite Serum. Now, we can approach this in a number of ways. One, we can go head on, and that is we try to rank for Elite Serum. And we can do that, and we'll probably get some sales. Um, but there's a lot more out there, people who want wrinkle cream and different things that we, we may not be able to get to. Um, the other way we can go is by doing wrinkle cream, right? Just ranking for wrinkle cream or anti-aging cream. Now, the thing with that is we, we're going to have a lot of buyers you know, there are a lot of buyers looking for that, and there's a lot of searches, but there's a lot of competition too. Not saying we couldn't rank for that. We very well could get on page one for that term. But think about it. If someone's looking for anti-aging cream or wrinkle cream, they're going to probably go to our site, but they're probably going to go to a few other sites that they find on page one and then choose a product from there. So we're not going to um, get all the sales. We'll get a good amount, but it's it's going to take we're gonna have competition and it's going to take work to get our site onto page one and to keep it there I mean that's the truth so that's where this strategy comes in because it's not a straight-on attack it's coming from behind or from the sides and it's really trying to think outside the box how can we get people that want our product that want the wrinkle cream product um, but don't even know that they want it yet how can we sell them the product um, without selling and actually make it make them think that it's their idea to get the wrinkle cream and the other thing to remember is what we want to do is we want to get as much traffic as possible because um, when someone comes on our site and and the local lead explosion site what we're doing is we're dropping a cookie so we're doing two things one we're dropping a cookie on their site so we can retarget them the second thing we're doing is we just want to give them information and we're going to uh, then send them over to our money site where they'll, they'll be able to get converted. When we're looking at what kind of traffic to get, you know, when we were looking at this module, you know, you can do something like wrinkle cream, but we know that this, this is a very right, highly competitive keyword. And if we look down here, you'll see there's, there's a lot of um, bigger sites that we'd, we'd have to overcome. And plus, you know, it's not going to bring us in tons of traffic really from all over the country like like the lead explosion will. So when we were going over this module, we figured we wanted to get in front of people that need wrinkle cream, that might be um, up for anti-aging cream, um, but maybe they, they never thought of using it before. Maybe they thought of using it, but they're looking at all different kinds of alternatives. So uh, we went through a few different scenarios. We looked at plastic surgery. We looked at facelifts, mini facelifts, and those. So some of those would work. Um, there, there is a bit more competition. So we came up with uh, Botox, Botox, and uh, Botox, Botox treatments. And the reason why we came up with this keyword is it's a, it's a really it's a simple procedure that people pay for. Um, it's not invasive. It's probably because they have some wrinkles, and they want to, um, and you know, and obviously they're looking for a, a affordable way to get rid of those wrinkles without major surgery. So if we could use this local site where it's used to rank for local businesses, right, for uh, a page for every city, if we can do something like Botox treatments in you know, Boise, Idaho, or Botox um, deals, or Botox specials in small city USA, and we get in front of thousands and thousands of people who are thinking about Botox. Now, the article that Mike wrote for the local lead explosion, and we'll go into that, 
it's not going to be targeting. It's not an article that says, hey, you know, buy wrinkle cream. You know, we're not going to be have a tile tag that says Botox treatments and then say buy wrinkle cream. No, it's going to be an article that talks about Botox treatments, talks about the positives, and also talks about the negatives. And then it, it, it'll, uh, there'll be a link for people to read more to go over to the sales page where we do some reverse marketing, where we tell them, a, you know, you can do Botox, but a better way is this Elite Serum. So we're taking these Botox people and we're trying to convert them over to a wrinkle cream or a serum. And at the same time, what we're doing is, since we dropped that cookie on their site, they're going to be seeing our advertisements all over the place, which is going to be talking about Elite Serum, the van, you know, instead of Botox or Botox as a Botox alternative. So even after they leave the page, and even if they don't even go over to our sales page, they're still going to be seeing this around, and we have a better chance of them going over and purchasing the product. Traffic trust jacking, because we're taking traffic, right, that people are from Botox. We're gaining them tru their trust by putting out an article about Botox, but not selling them. So, right, the, the, the um, local lead explosion is not the sales page. Then it takes them over to another article that um, will sell them. And this works. I know this works because I've done this before uh, with other other health products where we've actually put up pages just talking about the uh, not so much the product but talking about the issue people have and they would use the product for whether it be weight loss or anti-aging. So what happens is is they read the article that we put out and it's going to mention my product but a couple other products but my product is going to be the more favorable one but I'm not selling there's not a link on that on my blog post or my page that is even going to the product but we drop that cookie and then as they search around the internet and you know this this cookie will follow them around and so will our ads and so we end up getting a lot of selling a lot getting a lot of clicks from people seeing our ad and then clicking on it because they remember they heard about it um, and now they, they see it and then they click on it and they think it's it's they almost think it's their idea to actually get this product. What we really want to get across here is that there's more than one way, so to speak, to skin the cat or to get traffic, right? Like who would think of using a local lead site for wrinkle cream? But if you take it and you look at who's using it and how can you get them to look at your product. Uh, there's not a lot of people doing that. So you can basically corner the market in that area and you can do it with all kinds of product. It's just not with the wrinkle cream. You know, um, you know, people are looking locally for a lot of services, but if you have a product that's cheaper or that has that can fit into that service, um, this is a great, great strategy. So really we want you to stretch your mind, think outside the box, think of the products you're doing, think of the the, the different items you're trying to sell and see if you can fit it into this local uh, lead explosion program. Okay, so we're going to set up our WordPress site for uh, the local explosion. And uh, this is going to be our giant site that we're going to build over 20,000 pages. And we're going to be bringing Chris Marshall on uh, on the next video and he's actually going to show us how to use this software um, I've used it before and it's super simple but before we bring him on we just want to get prepared and we're gonna just open up um, I'm in my cPanel and I'm just gonna set up the WordPress so all the cPanels are pretty similar you're gonna come down here and you're gonna have a script section uh, this one here has WordPress so you just click it and it'll install some other ones you have to click on the actual script button and it'll, it'll give you an option for WordPress. They all have uh, pretty much an option where you can install the WordPress right from the cPanel. We're going to go to install. Uh, so this is the the URL, Medical Truth Revealed. We don't want to put it in a directory. Whoops. We don't want to put it in a directory, so we just want to delete that. Make sure you do that whenever you set set up your WordPress site. 
um, and I'm going to leave everything else the same. Now, the site name and the description, I already have that set. So I'm going to just copy it from here. Um, you could either put the site name and description in here, or you can wait until you have the your WordPress site up. I like to do it from here just because it saves me a step later. Okay. And then I'm going to put the, the uh, username and password in here. So I'm just going to pause this. Okay, so I, I filled that out, the username and password. I'm just going to hit install. And it's going to be installing the WordPress site um, on to my domain. Now, if you go into your Director's Cut series, in the OTO series, the one we did on Iowa City SEO, there's more detailed videos on how to um, set up your WordPress site using a Director's Cut skin and everything else. But for the Chris Marshall the Chris Marshall method for his local explosion we're just going to use the simple WordPress theme that uh, comes pre-installed with WordPress so now that we we have it installed let's log in and go into the into the dashboard okay so now that we're in the the WordPress dashboard uh, we wanted to just do a couple of things before we uh, we get Chris on the next video and and set up the local explosion pages as we want to go into plugins and we just want to clean them out I'm gonna get rid of these plugins um, and we're just gonna delete those because we really want this theme uh, to be really really lean um, since we're, we're putting so many pages on WordPress we don't want anything to hang it hang, hang it up like uh, plugins we don't need um, or anything like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to all pages. I'm going to get rid of the pages. Empty the trash and then posts. We're going to get rid of the posts. So now the plugins we do want, uh, what we're going to do is I'm just going to wait for Chris and uh, he's going to show us what plugins we want to put in here. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is some of the settings uh, that we want. Um, now, if you remember when we set up the WordPress, um, we put the site title in already and we also put the tagline. Uh, now, if you didn't do that, in uh, the installation you would come to settings you'd come to general and this is where you would put that and really the only what it is is I just wrote what the sites about um, we uncover truths about some seemingly root, routine cosmetic procedures you know so it's basically goes in line with what the sites about I didn't put any keywords in here because I'm not interested in ranking the home page um, I'm interested in ranking the the pages or the city pages that we're going to build out. So now when we go into the themes, um, I'm going to just pick a regular, you know, WordPress theme. You can use the, the 2015, 14. Um, we can go into the the theme section here, like we go add new theme. And you know you can pick from a variety of free themes. Uh, you know for this demonstration, I'm really um, and for these type of sites personally, I like to use the 2012 theme because it's very simple. I could put a header in there if I want. I could put a menu bar in, in it, um, and it's very clean. So I'm going to install that now. Right, so if we go to the site right here so here's what the site looks like right now so for the purpose of this over the shoulder and just to get things rolling this is how we're gonna start out now I'll, I'll 
probably come back and put a header on here, put a menu. I might even change the theme out after we have all the pages uploaded. Uh, maybe we put the director's cut. Um, maybe we put the director's cut theme on here. Uh, but because I just want to get this up, I want to get this out. I want to get the pages ranking. I want to start dropping cookies on people's computers. Um, I just want something that's going to be fast, lean, and I'm not going to have to get tied down into design. Um, a lot of times people get to this stage uh, and they just start thinking, okay, now I have to design the site. So now they, they're, they're waiting to design it or they're waiting for graphics. And it, it takes a while for you to get up and going. Um, we don't want to do that. We just want to get something up that's good enough for right now. We want to get the pages ranking. And once that's up and we start getting traffic, um, that traffic, for one, is going to overcome the lack of design we have. But once the traffic's coming in we start dropping cookies, we can go back and we could always beautify the site if we want. Because remember, this is one, this is kind of like a bait. We want them to read the article, right? Um, and then we want them to go over to our conversion page. So they, we want them to get the information here. Um, we're not selling them anything on this page. And then we want them to jump over to the conversion page. And we want to drop the cookie. That's really the purpose of this site. So just here's one thing to remember is you can have the best looking site um, and you know you can have the best conversion copy you can have it it just perfect but if you don't have traffic then it doesn't matter so for me I'd rather have a site up getting traffic then I can I can um, start working on uh, some of the graphics and and different things um, like that All right, so I'm here with Chris Marshall, and, and we're just going to go through a little bit of how we're going to find some keywords um, for our, our project here. And Chris has the last keyword tool up and running. So the term we were going to look for was we're going to go after is Botox. So I guess, Chris, if you want to take it from here. Yeah, no problem, Joe. Um yeah, what we're looking for here is uh, we're not overly worried about uh, search volume um, at the moment. What we're actually looking for um, and using TLKT for um, is to actually find some uh, LSI keywords, so keywords that are related to our main topic, which is Botox. Um, now, what we want to be careful of when we're writing an article is not over-optimizing, uh, particularly with our uh, local explosion technique, which is uh, going to produce lots and lots of... Uh, articles depending on which uh, country you're targeting it's going to be up at least probably 25,000 articles on the site so what we don't want to be doing is using the word Botox too much um, obviously on your home page of your site when you ultimately get there you're going to have um, 10 articles possibly on the home page so uh, say for example you've got you know the word Botox in there 20 times in an article that's, that's going to appear on your home page 200 times um, the word Botox so you just got to be a little bit careful and that's one of the reasons I use TLKT is it uh, it helps me to find different different ways of saying the same thing um, so uh, you know we might we might be talking about all sorts of things in our article whether that's you know eye, eye muscle problems is one of the things that's pulled up here um, as well as the more sort of Botox specific keywords so things like injections treatment cosmetic um, what else have we got here? Um, uh, uh, we've got uh, well things like side effects. Actually, perhaps another good keyword. That's we, we might actually want to use that as part of our article. So side effects of uh, Botox treatments, that sort of thing. So these are the kind of keywords we want to uh, start working into our article for several reasons. First of all, it um, it helps us to uh, defines or, or sort of establish relevance within the article for Google when they come crawling. Um, but also it means that we're going to be able to rank for more and more keywords. So the more keywords which are relevant to Botox we can get, the more we'll uh, stand a chance for ranking for for each sort of location um, once we've got all these pages on our website. All right. So so what we really want to get to is what, what our URL is going to be and um, kind of what our title is going to be, like that long tail keyword that we're going to rank for like so like botox if we're doing like botox san diego chances for yep. us ranking with local explosion for just botox san diego probably aren't too high right right 
Absolutely. Too, yeah, too broad a keyword, really. Too, too broad. One thing I like to do is, um, and I just brought up my screen here, or, and, you know, if we type in, say, Botox San Diego, and we go down and we look down to the bottom here in these related keyword searches, um, this is where a lot of times I like to get some of the the uh, long tail stuff is you see here Botox San Diego prices, Botox San Diego specials, and Botox uh, San Diego deals. So if we, we go and we look up here in the Google Keyword Planner, we're going to look at the searches. So if we look at Botox San Diego, we look at Botox San Diego prices. Or uh, actually, we want to do Botox San Diego deals. Those specials as well, wasn't there? Botox, yes, yeah, San Diego specials. I'm sorry, maybe treatments in there as well, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Botox treatment San Diego. I think. Yep. So basically, Chris, if I'm right with your with your software, we're looking for that long tail that maybe isn't going to get searched as much. Even if we get a few searches, it's good because we're kind of casting a large net over a, a lot of different areas. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, you're better off ranking. You're better off being sure to rank for something rather than risk ranking for nothing by going too broad. Yeah. So. It looks like we have Botox San Diego. Obviously, that's that's the money term, right? We're getting a lot of searches. Yep. Um, but if we look here at Botox San Diego specials, we're still getting 20. Botox San Diego deals, we're still getting 20 searches. I mean, that's that's not too bad. And then yep. what I was thinking, too, is if we're doing smaller cities, so say if we were doing a city in San Diego like Botox Vista, California, yeah, you know we may rank for that still, right? Since it's absolutely, easy. yeah. Right, and then we got deals on the other end of it. And you're certainly more likely to rank for that than you are just, you know, what was the place called? Vista, Vista, was it? Did you say? Vista, yeah. yeah. Vista, yeah. You're certainly more likely to rank for that than you are just, you know, Botox San Diego. It's going to be much harder than Botox San Diego deals. Right, and yeah, but since we have Botox next to the city, if it's an obscure city, like yeah, you should rank for both. Yeah, some it should be able to rank for both. So, yeah. I mean, that's not too bad. Um, so, I don't know, man. I'm thinking of going with this Botox San Diego deals and Botox San Diego specials. Yeah, that looks good to me. They're, uh, they're, sorry, they're, they're, also, they're also people looking to buy as well, aren't they? So, they've got, uh, you know, good intent. Yeah, and, and, and too, is if they're looking for a special or a deal for Botox, uh, they might be more up to look for an alternative also. Yep, certainly. So, and really, and the reason why we're using San Diego, it, it's just a city. So we just picked a city to kind of look at the search volume yep. in there. Right, it's kind of a big city. I mean, if we take San Diego out of here. Uh, and that'll just give us... Uh, the searches here so um you know i'm still liking deals and specials Pri yeah you know prices, something else uh, yeah. something else you could do as well is just stick uh, your um you see where you got Uni united states on the left hand side you could also switch that for san diego to see how many people are actually just searching for you know botox specials without the local modifier it within san diego if that makes sense mm-hmm mm-hmm so yeah, well, let's do that. That's it. Then take the. That's it. Click that one, and then take the uh, U.S. off. Take the whole country oh, off. Yeah, there. Move that. That's it. Good stuff. Spot on. If you just click out, it should update. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yep. So there's even more there. Sort of variations, and hopefully Google will uh, 
or rank us for just those within the area that the page targets. Yeah, all right. So, so it's even, more, even more to aim at. All right, so that's good. So if we go with, with Botox specials, deals, we could also put, like, treatments in the content. Yep, definitely. All right, so, Chris, we got these keywords right here. So let me ask you this. With your, um, with your software and you, you make all these pages, um, how how are they ranking? Like, are we trying to fill some void? How are they? How is it actually working? What, what are we going to really look for? Um, well, if we head over to Google search, well, let's look at uh, exactly what's there. So, you know, we've got, uh, so yeah, Botox San Diego. Let's go for Botox, uh, should we do specials maybe, something like that? Yeah, One of the so, ones that we were pulling well, out. So if we do Botox San Diego deals, oh, wait a second. Uh, my computer's kind of doing its own thing. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Brilliant. So if you if you look at a page like this, what we want to do is we want to um, basically exploit the fact that nobody else, when you get down to the small uh, towns um, around the country, are actually really optimizing for the keywords that we're able to do with the software. So for example, if we have, uh, you know, Botox City deals in our title, um, in San Diego, big place, you will find uh, you will find pages like that. If you go down to, I mean, if you just want to pick a, a random place nearby uh, to where you're living, Joe, that um, you know that that hasn't got a particularly large population, and change the San Diego for that, then hopefully, what we'll see is that the keywords don't really appear in the same way. So yeah, we've got Botox injections rather than. Uh, you know, Botox. In fact, you want to put uh, is it deals we've got in there? Yeah, deals. Uh, deals. So we're not actually seeing that in the uh, in the title here, whereas previously we were doing. So what we what we want to do is we want to almost find a balance between how how sort of many searches the uh, the keywords got, and whether people are optimizing for it. So we we've now come down far enough that you would hope that by just getting Botox Vista CA deals in the title of the article, that's probably going to not have to. Uh, be enough to rank us purely because there is just nothing better for Google to rank. Right. So even if we did, even if we did, say, say Botox San Diego, right? We see San Diego Botox. We we have Botox in San Diego in all these yep. titles, and we also have them in the URLs. Right. Yep. A lot of so, times we have them in the URLs here. Yeah. If we do tag on like deals. Um. And I know this is larger, you know, we don't really, we, Groupon has it up here, but yep. like these don't have deal in it. You know, this doesn't no. have, right, Living Social. Um, they don't have the word deal in them. Yeah, it's interesting, the word, in that, in that North, North County Coastal one, it does have mm -hmm. the word specials though, which was one of the other ones that we identified. So uh, that's, that again, we were talking about relevance with TLKT earlier. Um, Google's tying all these things together, so we're on the right lines already there. Yeah, and then, I mean, because like when we were first talking about which keyword to go after, right, we were looking at like plastic surgeon, and then we went down and we were looking at facelift, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, and we were looking at facelift. Yeah. San Diego, and it was, it was just, you know, everybody had, right, face, neck lift, you know, it was all these titles yeah, are exactly. optimized, so it's 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 too much. You know, it really isn't the ideal yep. keyword. And with a number of keywords out there, why go after the ones that are already competitive? Go, let, let's let's really uh, use the power of the software and yeah. build twenty five thousand pages that can target something that nobody else is going after. Right. Yeah. And two, like something like facelift. If you're in a small city, it might come up, but if somebody's in a small city. Too, they may they might not be searching their small city, you know. For exactly. A, a yep. Surgeon, so um, it's picking the right one, and and so if I understand it right, it's making sure that the uh, on the long tail search is that there's not a lot of people that have your long tail keyword in the title and the URL on the first page. Correct. Yeah. All right, All right guys. I'm here. I'm back here with Chris and. Chris Marshall, and we got the WordPress set up, ready to go, and then Chris is going to take us in. He's going to show us how to add the plugins, 
and he's going to show us how to use the software um, with the project that we're currently doing. So, hey, Chris, how are you doing? Hey, Joe, not bad, thank you. Let's uh, get this underway, shall we? All right. Excellent. So, uh, we've got, uh, courtesy of uh, Mike Long, we've got an article here, which we're going to use to... Uh, put in and uh, populate this site. Um, hopefully by now you might see my training uh, series that's in uh, Project X, J and Breakthrough. Um, and uh, if you haven't already, it might be worth having a quick look at that actually, something uh, Joe and I were just talking about before we started the recording. Um, you'll find it under the uh, website structure section of uh, your OMG members area. Um, but uh, we're going to run through this very quickly just to um, show you uh, this live. Um, now, this article, the uh, concept is we've got, uh, okay, so we've got uh, the uh, city name, which is uh, Small Town, and uh, we've got New York State there. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, tell the system that everywhere it sees Small Town, that's a, a city identifier, and New York is a uh, state. So same applies um, all the way through the article. Um, I don't know if you can see any more occurrences of that in Mike's article there, Joe, but I think that's got them all. Yeah, I think it's just those two. Yep, okay. So what we're going to do is change all the occurrences of small town to pound, pound, city, pound, pound. And what this is going to do is um, it's going to tell the system that we need to... Uh, swap out the occurrences of small town with the city. So, for example, when we're actually looking at, um, say, for example, Miami, Miami will go in there. When the system generates Orlando, Orlando will go in there, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we'll do the same with New York, and we're going to change that to pound, pound, state, pound, pound. Okay, and uh, what that will have done is it will change um, all of them throughout the article, even if we've missed one, so hopefully that's got them all there. So, um, what we want to do next is move this article over into uh, our WordPress blog. What we're going to do is create this as a draft post. So let's do new post. We're not going to publish this one because it's got the uh, the short codes, the uh, pound pound short codes in it. So let's just drop this in to our WordPress editor. Okay, that's our title. Okay, do we want these uh, permalink setting as well, Joe? To yeah, we want, yeah. Let's show them how to do all, all that, yep. Okay, so we'll do that under settings, permalinks. What I'm going to do is open it in a new window so I don't lose the uh, lose the page behind it. And we're just going to go for post name for now. Is that all right, Joe? Yeah, so what's happening is, like, for you guys who are just starting out, whenever you get a uh, WordPress blog, it automatically just will do the default, which is page equals number, but we want the keyword and the title and the URL, and that's why uh, Chris just clicked the choice for post name. So when he changes it, um, the title will actually okay. be in the URL. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll select post name, hit save changes, and then we'll be actually... Uh, have articles getting posted out to our blog by the system. They'll actually get the uh, the URL, the part after the domain name will look uh, very, very similar to the actual title of the article. So also they will be uh, including the, uh, the city and the state within the URL itself, which will help us from an SEO angle. Okay, so uh, let's have a quick look at the article. Now, one of the things we might want to do um, is uh, perhaps make sure that we can change our affiliate link once uh, we've... Um, once we've actually published this, because we're going to have uh, tens of thousands of pages, the last thing we want to do is find that uh, we need to change the URL at the bottom of our article, and uh, we're not really going to want to have to go in and change it 25,000 times or more. So what we can do to uh, allow us to do that is actually install a plugin, and the one I like to use is called Shortcoder. So we can go to Plugins, Add New, and that will take us... Um, to the um, plugin directory for WordPress. If we go to our search box at the top, let me see if I can move this meeting box out of the way. And we're just going to type in shortcoder. 
and that should give us the plugin we want. So here we go, it's the first one that comes up. We're going to click install now. Activate the plugin. Okay, and what that's going to allow us to do is if we come back to our article here and save it as a draft for now, we're going to get this extra symbol up here which allows us to ensure insert our short codes. So if we delete or cut this out of the article and call it, um, let's go back to short coder a second. Now we've activated it, it'll be under settings, settings short coder. And um, we can call this, I don't know, say bottom affiliate link or bottom link. Um, so we know that's the link at the bottom of the article. And in the box underneath, we can actually paste that in. And that's the link that we actually removed from the bottom of the article a few seconds ago. So if we actually look at the uh, link, it's actually a bit.ly link we're using. Would you like to open it in a new window, Joe? Sure. Uh, yep. Yeah, let's just open it in a new window. Okay, great. So this works just like the post editor does in WordPress. It's just, if you like, it allows us to uh, edit the, uh, the section later that we put into our short code. So when we click, uh, click create short code, you'll see that we get uh, one created. Now if we go back to our post and we click on the short coder icon, notice that the, uh, the cursor is still down at the bottom where we took the link out from. It says insert a short code and then in a second when it's loaded, we've got our bottom link option. So if we click on that and press insert short code, then we get this little um, bit of text here which tells the short code plugin to insert the bottom link that we just created in the short coder plugin. So hopefully that makes sense. That, uh, this bit here corresponds to the name of the short code in short coder. Now, now uh, Chris, can, that, yeah, yeah, I got it. Can you also do that with a video or a picture? So yeah, you can uh, you can use a short coder for anything you like. It could be a picture and uh, a video, a link. Uh, it could just be a, a paragraph or two of text if you want to give yourself the opportunity to add more keywords in further down the line. So uh, what we can do in this instance, we'll just uh, put the article directly into sorry the picture directly into the article. So let us put the cursor where we want it before the third paragraph. We'll click Add Media. We'll find our file. Here we go. So this is a before and after image. Mm -hmm. Okay. So perhaps what we'd like to do with this is we'd actually include a uh, local modifier within the actual alt text of the image. So that'll just give us a you know an extra occurrence of Miami, Orlando, wherever it happens to be, um, in the alt text of the picture. So um, what do you want to do? Maybe uh, well, well, uh, something here. Boast of um, co uh, cost of Botox in of uh, Botox, <laughs> cost of Botox in city. And the reason why Chris is doing this is because when your page gets crawled, the actual um, text in your picture gets crawled. So um, Google doesn't read the picture; it reads the text inside the picture. So that's actually adding another keyword to your article. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so in this case, the word cost isn't in the article, probably. So, uh, we'll uh, we'll get it into our alt text, and then uh, that will allow us to rank. Okay. So, uh, do you want a caption on the image, Joe, or do you want to just leave that? No, I'll just leave it like that. Okay. Any any uh, do you want it aligned to so that the text wraps around it, or do you just want it as a an image on its own? Uh, I don't know. I guess we'll see how it looks. What do you think? Put it yeah, we'll it. just leave it as, as none for now then and then. Uh, we don't want to link it to anything, do we? No. Or do you want to link it to our... No, we'll just leave it as no, it is. No, just leave it, yeah. Um, let me think. So 500 oh. wide. I don't know what our uh, theme looks like off the top. Let's leave it as well, medium for now. Medium, just... yeah. Let's see what it looks like in there. Okay. Um, Maybe center it. Yeah, probably good to center it. Okay. Do you want to try wrapping some text around it and see what the hell that looks? Or uh, are you happy with that? Yeah, I'll just leave it. I mean... Okay. Uh, I mean, and then we can see what it looks like, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So then, 
at that point, unless there's anything uh, you want me to add into there, Joe, I, th I would actually put some headings in. Oh yeah, we should probably put some headings uh, in here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let, let me. Um, so maybe we'll put. Uh, Something like that, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll, maybe we'll do another one somewhere else that's got a, uh, a city in it. Yeah, so maybe make that like an H3 tag or something. or. H3, okay, that's fine. Um, let's have a look down here. How about something like local city Botox deals, something like that, because we're talking about Groupon there, aren't we? In fact, is there another word? We've got deals further up. Um, offers, maybe? Uh, offers, yeah, you can do offers. Yeah, that's good. Again, we can build in an extra keyword then, can't we? Hopefully it's helpful to people seeing us doing this on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and the reason why we want to put headers in is, is or, you know, f for a couple of reasons. One, it breaks up the text, and, and nowadays people like to read in, in kind of in chunks, and they like to scan. Um, and also, it's also good um, when Google sees your your page laid out in a readable way. It actually gives you a little better, um, gives you a little help with uh, the rankings also. Yeah, absolutely. Now, should we do a, a Greg Morrison style outbound authority link on this as well? Sure, we can do that. Should we do it to group on that? Might be an obvious. Well, you know what? You know what? Let's. Yeah, let's not. Stuff. Let's not do a, a outbound link. I don't want to confuse people because in this article, okay. the purpose of this article is, one, really we want to drop a cookie on their computer, and then, two, we want them to go over to our uh, conversion article. So um, okay. we just no want problem. to send them in one place. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Now, shall we also add some more short coder um, links in so that we can edit in between paragraphs later if we want to? Sure. Maybe if we want to bulk out the article. Okay. Right. So, so what Chris is doing, he's putting these short codes in, but they're not going to appear in the article. No one's going to see them. If we don't use them, that's fine. But if we want to use them, they're there. So if we have 27,000 know, posts up, we just simply edit the short code he puts in there, and it will automatically add content to those posts. Okay, that's that'll probably doing. That's probably enough there, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so we've basically added uh, short codes labeled insert one through five. Okay, once again, uh, I'll save the draft so that just in case anything goes wrong. And then we can move over to actually posting this article now. Well, now when we, we go um... uh, over into what if we put Sorry. finish putting the plugins? Do you got a few more? Pl you got any more plugins you put in, or is it that it? Um, we we don't need any more. I mean, this this uh, the way that I've designed the system, the local explosion system that uh, everybody in OMG's got access to, or in Project XJ mm -hmm. breakthrough and so on, um, is that you it, it, in an ideal world actually uh, you're better off posting. Um, your, from, from the system into your WordPress blog uh, before you start adding plugins um, other than shortcoder. Obviously, you'll want, you'll want your shortcoder in there first. But things like if you want to use anything like Pretty Link or Sitemaps or anything like that, you're better off putting those in after you've done the posting run. And the reason for that is if you have, for example, a sitemap which up updates every time a post gets added, um, you might find your hosting company notice quite quickly the servers crawling if you're generating uh, a site map 25,000 times as the uh, the posts are going out so uh, so yeah see so by all means you can use them but I'd wait until after the uh, posting runs complete all right fantastic <laughs> does that answer your question yeah that's perfect <laughs> perfect I think yeah Excellent. So we, we really only need one plugin um, for this so yep. that's okay. yep. and, and to be honest you only even need short coder if you want to update things later um, if you if if you're 100 percent confident you've got everything in your article you're ever going to need and it's never going to change you don't even need that but I think um, for safety first it helps to be able to edit them because uh, it's a rather tedious job editing 25,000 articles by hand. <laughs> yeah, especially if you have a link in there because you know you never know what's going to happen. You might need to change. That <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs>
absolutely. Um, so, do you want me to show people quickly where, in, for example, in Breakthrough, they can find the software at this point before we jump straight into it? Or uh... Yeah, yeah, if you have it up. Yep. Uh, I haven't got it up, but I can certainly log in to Breakthrough. Um, let me see. Um, yeah, I, I actually have it up right here. Let me see if I can... I've got it here now, actually. It's oh, you got it? On. Okay. Yep, got it. So, uh, here's your Breakthrough home homepage. Um, obviously, uh, Different people will be in slightly different variations, but you're looking for the website structure um, section on the right-hand side, which uh, in Breakthrough is under month one. I believe in the earlier um, editions, like uh, Project X, Project J, it's just called website structure. And then at the bottom of this page, you'll find my name, Chris Marshall. Right. And you can find a link to the software, which will take you to sign up. Um, and there's four videos here which I've done to show you how to use the software uh, as a very quick one. There's also a, a webinar in uh, Mike Long's section if you want to go into a huge amount of detail. I think that runs about two, uh, two and a half hours, something like that. Wow. So uh, there's all the information you're really going to need there. So all you do is click through this link. Um, it'll take you to a page where you can start the sign-up process. Okay. And uh, from there on in, you just follow follow the instructions. It'll, it'll guide you through the process. Um, even Joe managed it, didn't you, Joe? <laughs> yeah, that wasn't too hard. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's actually Excellent. very, very, very simple. One, very, very simple to do. So, and yes, and, I, and I would encourage Sorry. everyone cool. looking. You know, we're we're kind of doing an overview of this for the over the shoulder, but I would definitely go back into breakthrough um, area or Project J or X, whatever you have, and look at the videos that Chris put together because they're very, very detailed uh, how-to videos to do this. And, sure. and you're, giving out, you, you're giving out five free runs of this, is that true? That's right. Yeah, everybody, uh, everybody from in, in the, the full coaching edition of OMG from Project X onwards, so if you're in Project X, J, Breakthrough, you get five, uh, five submission runs for free. So, uh, yeah, that's, that should be enough to uh, make a couple of mistakes and still get, get yourself making money. <laughs> yep. Excellent. So once you uh, once you get far enough through the uh, the sign up process, once you've created your account, you'll actually get get the link to actually log in here. Um, I've actually got a test account here, which we used for the uh, the uh, training website, and I believe also the one that we did on Mike's webinar. So uh, hopefully there's some credits in here still. Okay, here we go. So um, basically, what you need to do to make this work is first, it's a two-step process. First of all, you have to connect your WordPress site up to the system, and uh, we've tried to make that as simple as possible. So all you do is you click Add Site, and then you've got a WordPress URL. So let's uh, grab that. Here's our site, medicaltruthrevealed.com. You've got a WordPress username. And you've got a WordPress password. I suspect Joe will be editing this out. <laughs> um, so we'll hit save. Okay, so now we've uh, we've added the site. You can see it here. The first time you uh, you log in, you you won't see this table. It'll be a uh, it'll just be a blank page. Once you add your first site, this table will appear. So what we want to do first and foremost is make sure that, uh, that, that my system is actually able to connect to your um, WordPress website. And the reason for that is we're about to throw tens of thousands of uh, posts at it, so it's going to uh, somewhat annoy your hosting company if we're constantly getting a username and password error or something along those lines. So all you do to do that is press this link that says Test Connection to WordPress, and then it tells you all we need to do now is check the post section of our WordPress dashboard. So if we go back to our WordPress dashboard and go to all posts, what we can now see is this post appeared. This is your test post draft. That proves to us that we can actually, we've actually got a working connection between the system and the WordPress blog. So we don't need this one anymore. You can either leave it there, you can delete it, whatever you want to do. I'll just hit trash. It's not going to appear on the actual uh, the public front end of your website because uh, obviously it's only ever a draft, but uh, we just want to make sure that the, uh, the system is able to post. Okay. You clear so far there, Joe? Yeah, yeah. It's Excellent. It's Brilliant. Very simple. Yeah. Good. So we'll go back to the menu, and the next thing we're going to do is go to the Generate Articles link. Now, this is the, uh, 
the part where we actually set up what's going to get posted to our website. So if we go, let's close that one, we'll go back to our article here. We're going to lift the title. Uh, we're going to copy and paste it straight into the uh, title box. Now the article needs to come from the text tab. And the reason for that is we want to make sure we pick up all of the HTML code that's actually in the article itself so that the, uh, the image is formatted properly, um, you know, the, the H3 tags are all picked up properly. So all we do is select all, copy, and then go to the article box and paste. Okay, so you'll see all of our HTML code has been picked up as well, and that's all in the article as well. Okay, so you can then select your uh, your country. In this case, we're going to do USA, I presume, Joe? Yeah, so for each of those countries, you have all the cities preloaded. Is that the case? That's correct, yeah. Yep, yeah. and this is going to do a run across every uh, city in the UK. We call them cities, towns, villages. I don't know how well mm -hmm. that translates to the US. Um, but uh, it runs to a database. I think in the US it's about 25,000. Yeah. So... Yep. Uh, a significant number. Now, what we want to uh, do is also define our tags and categories just like we would do in a normal WordPress article. Um, city and state in our title. Um, that will give us uh, obviously unique URLs, so, so it will be medicaltruthrevealed.com forward slash Botox City, so it will be Botox uh, Miami, Florida deals and specials. Okay. And, and one thing to uh, keep in uh, mind is is Really, we're just doing, we're probably only going to do one run on this domain, right? Maybe two at max. Yeah. But, but the reason yep. we did, we, there was a reason why we didn't use an exact match domain there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And what was that, Chris? Um, it's basically because of the way that we were just talking about that. So we're going to have medicaltruthsrevealed.com forward slash Botox Miami Florida deals and specials. Say, for example, we had... BotoxDealsAndSpecials.com. We we run the risk of over optimizing our URL, so we might have BotoxDealsAndSpecials.com forward slash Botox Miami Florida Deals and Specials as our URL. So we we're sort of in danger there of uh, of actually tripping some filters in Google, and uh, actually making our you know almost penalizing ourselves before we even got started. So uh, we're just playing safe, really. Yep. All right. Okay, so should we go for this then? Yeah, let's do it. Right, so let's click queue them. Um, the important thing when you do this is to only click it once. I have put a note text next to that button at the bottom. A few people have clicked it two or three times thinking nothing's happened. But although the page is, is not doing anything, you can see it's uh, spinning around at the top here. Um, this might take a few minutes depending on how busy the system is at the time. Sometimes it takes 30 seconds, sometimes it takes you know, two, three, four minutes to complete. Um, what's actually happening in the background is it's actually generating all 25,000 articles or so. Um, and they're all being queued up in the background ready to get uh, spat out into your site. <laughs> so hopefully in a second this will show it's completed. So right. Um, okay, so the next thing we can do is if we click the menu link, you can see it says submission complete. Now that doesn't mean all your articles are in your site. What it means is that the actual submission process is complete. If you click on the uh, queues link on the end, you should see the number of articles left to be posted out to your site. So from time to time, when we refresh this, it may not have started yet, um, but in a few minutes it'll actually uh, start the posting process and this will start going out into the website itself. So uh, what's probably happening at the moment is it's finished, the system's finishing the run from somebody else um, and it'll pick it up. It usually takes no more than five minutes to get started. If you're waiting more than half an hour or so, there's probably some kind of problem. And there are a few notes in the tool which talk about um, some of the hosts that we've got problems with at that time. Most of them we've, uh, we've managed to resolve now. But uh, there are, if you look at the top um, of the tool when you log in, you'll see any problems that we know about. There's no point in naming them on the video because those will probably be fixed by then. <laughs> All right. No, that's fantastic. Okay. And then do you have a list okay. of hosts that you recommend to use with this? Or is that uh, recommended? No, really for, no, for that exact reason that they keep changing 
working, I'm kind of avoiding that. Um, that's what I would do is I would check the top of the tool when you log in. Um, and uh, generally speaking, we are. What I can say, obviously, is we are using all the big hosts, and most of them are working at the moment fine. You know, plenty of people have used Hostgator. Um, plenty of people have used, you know, the ones that, that are quite common in OMG that have been used, you know, SEO hosting and all those kind of things. So those have all been fine so far. Um, I think this this has actually started going down. So let's have a quick oh, yeah. yeah, there we go. So it just dropped there. Yeah. Let's have a quick look at the website. Here we go. So there's our website now. These have started to uh, populate. All right, perfect. So there we go. Now let me ask you: Does it matter if we, if we, if we just only use one post on the home page? Does it make a difference? Um, some people have tried that. What we have found is that um, ranking, sorry, indexing the pages to start with seems to be um, harder. It's not true that in every case people have had problems with it when they've uh, they've, they've switched it to one post per, from the home page and category pages. Um, but it probably is true to say that more people have had problems when they have done that than people have left it as 10 on the front page, if that makes sense. Yeah. Now, have you ever, after the whole site was indexed, what if we want to go back and, say, put a new theme on here or fix this site up a little bit? Do you find you have problems? Yeah. No, that's, that should be absolutely fine then. What... what um, I, I would avoid doing that until the posting process is finished. Um, you know, we, 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 how far in are we now? We've we had twenty five thousand, so we've probably got getting on for a hundred thousand. Sorry, hundred thousand, hundred hundred okay. posts on there uh, already. Let's have a quick look. Uh, yeah, one hundred and twenty one have posted already. Um, so it will slowly work its way through. Typically, um, the post runs take anything from three hours if you've got a really fast host, up until two to up to two to three days um, if you if you've got one of the slower hosts. And a lot of the time, that just depends what other users are doing on the same server. So it's it's not even which company company you're using. A lot of the time, it's just uh, a bit of potluck. But you know, if you the way I, I, a few people have sort of said, oh, this is really slow. But my answer to that has always been, well, you know, if you're how long would it take you to create a twenty five thousand page? Uh, <laughs> website without the software you know yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's still pretty quick when you put it in the, in that in that kind of way so uh, all right so we wait yeah once that's so, so we'd wait for all uh, yeah, once that's all posted then right yeah that's right and once that's happened feel free to change your themes around you know add plugins to your heart's content at that point um it's uh, it's just the process of while it's posting i'd i'd rather people didn't get into trouble with their hosting companies and get their you know their website suspended and that sort of stuff um and most of the time when we've uh, we've had problems and running into you know like uh, blocks and things like that where people, where hosting companies have blocked you know the posting process from happening has been because things like Pretty Link, um, XML sitemaps, and things have been added too early, um, which is probably partly my fault because I did uh, use that as a, an example on uh, the uh, on the webinar. So uh, just just wait until um, wait until the posting's finished, and then you should be absolutely fine. All right. So what we'll do is we so we put up a site like this, we let it all post, yep. and probably it's a good yep. idea to let the pages get indexed. I mean, and then yeah, change probably. the theme after it's indexed. I mean, because I put a site up, and I think it took, to get all the pages indexed, it took about a week. But in in three yeah. days, I had thousands of pages indexed. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Were you using sitemaps on that one, or was that just straight? I was. What I did is I did exactly what we did here, is I put this site up just with the same theme. When everything got posted... Uh, to it, then I put sitemaps on, and um, I connected Google Webmaster Tool to it. So, um, and that's it. I didn't even change the theme. I just put a header on, and yep. that was it. Yeah. Good stuff. So. Excellent. So, uh, yeah. So I think um, hopefully that that shows how simple it is to put it all together. Anyway, it's. Um, it's a lot quicker than, than it takes. I don't know how long uh, this video is going to be, but when you're actually doing it and you know what you're doing, you can uh, you can knock these sort of sites out once you've got the article there in you know 15, 20 minutes. So it doesn't take very long at all. Yeah, fantastic. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Chris, for coming on and showing us this. No problem, Joe. Any time. All right. All right. All right, guys. So.
I just got a message from Chris, the site that we built. It's been about two days since we put this site together and all the pages have been uploaded. So this site now has about 26,000 uh, actual posts on it. So one post for every city in the United States. Now, I went over to Google and I went to see if, and I found out that the site has not been indexed yet. Now, I'm not too worried about this because it's really a brand new site. I just bought the domain a couple of days ago. So sometimes it takes a while uh, for it to get crawled. But at this point, I'm going to give it a little help. So I'm going to put in here a couple of plugins. So let me log in to the back end here. We're going to go to the dashboard. And if you watch the other video, um, you'll remember we only have one plugin in here, and it's a, it's a short coder. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add two more plugins. One is I'm going to put on Google Analytics because I want to track and see um, you know, what kind of traffic I'm getting um, and where the traffic's coming from. And two, I'm going to, um, I'm going to put on here um, a site map. And then I'm also going to do uh, Google Webmaster. So we're going to add a new plugin. And the first thing I'm going to do is put in my sitemap. Okay, so I just simply uh, put in the search for sitemap XML and here we have Google XML sitemap and that'll work for what I'm doing. Um, yes, you'll see this one has uh, 16 million downloads and I've used this plugin plenty of times before. Now, in the training that Chris has in your members area, the full training he shows how you can use a video sitemap to get things um, index even a little quicker. I like uh, using this Google sitemap because it's it's a little more natural and it may take longer to get the pages indexed but I'll get more pages indexed. Sometimes that video sitemap um, it stops after a while. So this one it'll it'll um, in about two weeks I bet uh, I should have all my pages indexed. Okay so now the, the next plugin we're gonna do is uh, the Google Analyticator. Okay, so here we say I just put in Google, Google Analytics and now I have uh, Google Analyticator. I'm doing this for two reasons. One, I want to track obviously my traffic, but also it makes installing uh, Webmaster tools a lot easier. I don't have to do any code or anything. All right, so we're going to install that. And activate the plugin. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to connect my Google Analytics account. So go to Google. Well, actually, right here, we'll go to Google Analytics and we'll sign in. Okay, so I have to actually sign up for this one. Okay, so we're just going to give this uh, an account name. Um, all right, so basically what I did here is I just filled it out. I put in, gave the account a name. I put the website name in here. I put the website, the industry. And then I'm just going to put uh, get tracking ID. Wait till it loads. Okay, so here's my tracking ID. Here's all the information. Now, the thing I like about the Google Analyticator is if I go into my Google Analytics section, I just go here and I I click this little tab, And it's going to ask uh, for permissions. I'm going to say yes. And then I get this code here. So I'm going to copy this code. I go back here and I stick this code right in. Save and continue. And so what we're going to do here is uh, we just have to enable it. So we hit. Now, if you have multiple accounts on your analytics, you know, some of my 
analytic accounts. We I have like 20, 30 accounts. So we just you just pick the right one. And we're going to hit enable. And then you're going to come down here. Hit save changes. And that's it. And now it's your Google Analytics is enabled. So now next what we want to do is our Google Webmaster. We're just going to go to Webmaster. We're going to sign in again. Okay, here we are. Now what I want to do is I'm going to add a site. So I just want to go back to my site. I'm going to just copy this right here. I'm going to add it. Okay, now it's going to give me, it's going to tell me I have to put some code and, and um, the tracking code in, but I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to go to alternative method. And I'm going to go to, actually they changed this around a bit and looks like now they make the, they made the recommended method using the Google Analytics, which we have set up. So I'm going to simply hit verify and that's it. That's as how easy it is to hook up your Google Webmaster. Okay, so now that I'm in my, my dashboard, there's a couple of things I want to do. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to um, I want to put my sitemap in here. Okay, so we're going to go over to sitemaps, and I'm going to hit add test a sitemaps, or we can we could submit a sitemap right here. So I'm just going to get my sitemap, and if you don't know how to find the your sitemap just go into your dashboard go under settings go to XML sitemap to to your sitemap which is right here actually that's where it is so this is your sitemap so you, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy this last little piece we're gonna come over here we're gonna stick this in right here and we're gonna put submit sitemap okay now it's submitted and we're gonna hit refresh okay so that's what it is it's pending um, so it'll take a little time, but um, you know, to go through. But now we've submitted our sitemap. The next thing I want to do is I want to fetch as a Google bot. And what this is going to do is going to call out the Google crawlers to my site, and it's gonna it's gonna have them crawl the site. So I'm gonna just hit fetch because we can do pages. So if you want to crawl a specific page, you can put that in here. If you add a new page to your site. But here I just want to I just want them to crawl the whole the the whole site. I'm not going to put in individual pages. We're going to go submit to the index and they're going to ask to crawl only this URL. I'll crawl this URL and this direct links. Well, I want to do its direct links. Okay. And that's it. It's complete. So, so at this point, this is all I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm just going to uh, I got the site map up. I got um, I, I got the bots coming out to crawl the site and I'm gonna give it a few days if it still hasn't crawled I may ping it or something else but for now I'm gonna do uh, as minimal as possible I want it to look as natural as possible um, it should start crawling right away it may take a couple days um, but what we're gonna do is I want to go over and let's just see let's take a look and see if it's been crawled yet. Well, look at that. So it looks like um, the home page uh, has been crawled. So just from doing that one thing, we've already got our site crawled within probably about five minutes. So next what we're gonna do is we'll, we'll start seeing more and more pages um, get crawled and indexed. So now the next videos, we're gonna talk about setting up the uh, retargeting pixels uh, and how we set up an account for that. Hey guys, we're going to be uploading another video to our channel. Now we had uploaded the first one, uh, the interview with Mike and Tim Schmidt, um, and we've gotten a few views so far. But you know, we just did it yesterday, so it's going to take a little bit. Now we're, we're uploading another video, and. It's a video that was done by someone who's actually reviewing the product. So the keywords that we're going to go after for this video are going to be pretty similar 
to the one we did with the, the interview. And usually I'm, I'm not really up for ranking two videos for the same keyword, but I am doing it in this case because it's a totally different angle and it's a to totally different type of video. For one, this video is an interview type video. It's um, kind of building up the authority of Lead Serum, like it's so good someone actually in interviewed the inventor of it. Um, you know, so it, it gives weight to the product. Um, this one here is someone actually who used the product that's talking about the product, that's comparing it to other products she used. Um, she talks about how she had Botox and how she used this and the differences. And it's a real review, it's a real person review. And a lot of times people will always, always believe somebody else opposed to the product creator. Meaning that you know, if you talk about yourself on your website, well that's good, but if someone else talks about you, um, people tend to listen to them more and give it more weight. I mean, think about it. Like if you're looking for a product on Amazon to buy yourself, do you just read what the, the person trying to sell it is saying? Or do you go down and do you read the reviews, right? You know, you read, I always read the reviews, whether it's that, whether it's watching a movie, you know, anything. You always want to hear what other people are saying. So that's why we want to rank this video also for Elite Serum and Elite Serum Review. So I'm not going to go through the whole process again um, of, of how I do the YouTube Live, but I am going to show you how I'm going to basically do this one video. So what I'm, I'm going to put here is I'm going to schedule a new event. I'm going to put in the title. And let me just see what we're going to do is I'm going to copy this. And uh, we're gonna, there are too many tabs open up there. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to do real elite serum reviews. Because uh, I find whenever I do reviews, people will look for, you know, Elite Serum review reviews, but they want real Elite Serum reviews, meaning real people who use the product, right? Not paid or, or people trying to sell the product. So I added uh, real to it. I still have my keyword in here, Elite Serum review reviews. And then I added this other long tail, anti-aging cream with argelene in it. Because she talks about that inside her video. And I think we may have a good chance also to rank for that. So with this one, we're going after Elite Serum, Elite Serum Reviews, and this is our secondary. If we can get it, that'd be great. Anti-aging cream with Argelene. Okay, and then the rest of this is pretty basic, just like the way we've done it before. Um, you know, here's our, our copy. We're going to put this in here. Okay, so we have the content here, and if we look at it, um, we have Elite Serum right here, right in the first two sentences. We have anti-aging cream. Uh, we have the word argelene, um, and then we have our link right here. So I think this will this will be good. We have our keywords here in the first two sentences. We also have it here. We have Elite Serum review here, um, and I do have argelene in here again. And then down here I have basically our hashtags, Elite Serum, Elite Serum Reviews, anti aging Cream, Argelene. Um, so I'll just, I'll, I'll use these for our tags. Okay, so, you know, I got my tags in here. Um, here's another thing I did is I'm actually interlinking my videos. So at the end of this video, I have, all, I wrote also here's a full interview that was done with the creator, Tim Schmidt. And this links to the first video that we uploaded. So we'll get a little link juice to our other uh, interview video. And uh, so that's it for now. Um, we have our keywords in here. So right now I'm just going to pause the video and I'm going to run this through YouTube Live like we did with the first video. All right, so I uploaded the video, and here you'll see it. I just trimmed it up, so it's in progress of being edited. Um, that's it. So I think we're we're um, in YouTube at least. 
I think we're ranking for our secondary keyword. Yeah, so we're right here. Um, we're number two, uh, which is pretty good. I mean, okay, let's just check a keyword here in Google. So if we type in like real elite serum review, uh, looks like here we are on, um, you know, page two of Google, which um, it's okay. I mean, we can easily get that to page one, obviously, um, or the term elite serum review. I don't think we're going to show up right now anywhere now. So. So it's good we got some early results, but we're definitely going to need to do some more work to these videos uh, to get them to rank higher. And we're going to be showing you those in this over the shoulder series. That's what it's all about. So uh, we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I run a live event. I'm going to take the video that Tim Schmidt and Mike Long did on their elite serum review and we're going to run it through the live event um, now i have very detailed training on how to set up a youtube channel how to properly um, set up your live event and everything else inside project breakthrough so if you go um, to project breakthrough let's see we're in project breakthrough right now there's a couple of places that you can find it one in the youtube section um, you're going to see here I have YouTube channel optimization and Google Hangouts and more. These two sections, I really go into depth how to set up your YouTube channel. Also, in the 2015 Over the Shoulder series that we did on Iowa City SEO, um, I, I really went into more detail. If you go to set up 11 through 15, um, I have YouTube part one and part two. Um, I would really watch that because I really go into detail how to optimize your channel. And then if we go to 16 through 20, right, I talk here again how to upload uh, a YouTube video live. Um, and there's some things I cover in here that I'm not going to um, have time to cover in this series. So you can go over there and check those out. Now getting back to the live event, this YouTube channel um, if we go to the dashboard, it's one I just set up for this over-the-shoulder series, and we're, we're calling it uh, Ground Breaking Health and Body Tips. And when, if you want to get to this section, what you do is when you log into the, the YouTube, you just go to Creator Studio when, when you log into you, your YouTube channel, and it's going to bring us to this dashboard. We can go to Video Manager. We're going to go to Live Events. Now you have to enable the live event. In order to do that, you're going to have to do a phone verification. Um, in those in those other videos, I go into more detail on that. So if I hit live event, the first thing I want to make sure I do is come over here and I hit custom. Okay, because if it's it defaults to quick, which means is if you set this up and you go to run it, um, it's going to automatically make a Google Hangout. Now, if you if you're doing a live video, that's fine. A Google Hangout is is a live version of live events, but we're running it through live events because we want to use a pre-recorded video. That's why we're using live events. So we hit custom. Then we want to come up here and we want to adjust the time. Now, the time doesn't really matter. It only matters that it's sometime in the future. So right now we're at 10:38 and it's set for 11 a.m. It's perfectly fine. That's what we want to, um, we're going to leave it at. Um, now we're going to upload the title description tags the same way we would a regular YouTube video. I have the content here that that Mike uh, gave me that he wrote. So we're, we're just going to copy it and I'm going to bring it over. Now the title that we're using is called Elite Serum Review and and that's what, what what this is. It's an elite serum review. That's what we want to rank for. Uh, we have a secondary keyword here. Does elite serum really work? Now, what I did is I simply went to Google and I typed in elite serum review. 
okay? And the first related search that drops down is what? Does Elite Serum really work? And you can go down here and you'll see these, these are like some secondary keywords that Google is saying. Um, if people search for Elite Serum, they're also searching for does Elite Serum really work? Elite Serum eye cream reviews. Um, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to I'm going to put it in my video because I'll have a good chance of rank if I go after this I'll have a good chance of ranking for this and and vice versa. Now, can I do Elite Serum review the best face cream? Sure. Um, the best wrinkle cream I could. Um, but in this video, I'm really I just want to target one keyword now I'll use those like best face cream and other in the description but really this is more of a, a really a, a very 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 targeted approach right we're, we're using say using a shotgun going after a bunch of different keywords we're using a, a really a focused rifle right we're just gonna go for this one keyword and I find I have a lot better chance of ranking for what I want because if I'm trying to do say five major keywords with one video um, one, I'm going to have a harder time ranking for, for any one of those. And two, you know, I want my videos to be really, really focused on the keyword because if I'm ranking for it, you know, the video has to convert, right? It has to make sense to the viewer. So if I'm, if I, if I put it up for, you know, using a keyword that has a lot of traffic, but my video isn't exactly on that, you know, you want to be careful. So this video is just on a Elite Serum Reviews. Um, and you know that's what we're going for okay so right here we go back into the content now if you watch any of my videos I always say the first two lines in your YouTube channel are the most important well why is it most important well when people see your video uh, Google only displays the first couple of sentences and then they have to hit a tab to see the rest of the description uh, not everybody is tech savvy or used to YouTube that are watching the video and some of them just don't know to do that. So we want to get our keyword, we want to get our call to action and everything in the first uh, two lines. Now after do, I do that, I'm going to take the rest of my content. And I'm going to put it in here. Okay, so you'll see if you look at this, the, the content, let me take out that. I do have some related keywords, okay, that I want in there. Like we do have best anti-aging cream. Now, um, you know, if if we could if we happen to get enough link juice or 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 and we rank for that, great. But like I said, it's not one I'm targeting. I will do a different video on best anti-aging cream and just focus on that. But it's a good secondary keyword to have because uh, it is related to Elite Serum. We have some of the ingredients here and we have other keywords that people are, are searching for or that they relate to this product. Um, so if we come down here, I also have a link. This link is, is taking me back to our blog. It just says check out what others are saying about Elite Serum. And I have hashtags. These hashtags are once we run it on, on YouTube live events, uh, it'll post to our, our Google Plus page if we set it up or a Twitter. Um, and so then that's where those hashtags are going to come into play. Now these hashtags are different than stacking keywords on the bottom of your videos. I know that was popular for a long time. So people put up a video and they put like 40 keywords or 10 keywords underneath it and just stack them one after the other. other. I did that for a while and it worked. It's not really working that well anymore. Uh, it's considered pretty spammy. So I don't do that any, anymore. The most I'll do is do a few hashtags that are related to the video. And then we just have our, our tags. And really I'm just going to do the tags that we want to rank for. And really my main keyword I want to rank for I like to put as the first tag. So I'm just doing, I'm doing elite Elite Serum, Elite Serum Review. You gotta be careful if, if they're too long, they'll get cut off. Um, so I didn't do that, I just did does Elite Serum work. Okay.
So I'm going to just put these three keywords in here, Elite Serum Review, Elite Serum, Does Elite Serum Work? Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to share it on Google+. Plus. If I have a Twitter hooked up to that, then you can hit Twitter. Um, and, and really for this video, this is all we need to do. So the next thing, we're just going to hit Create Event. And uh, what we need to run this through YouTube Lives is going to be Wirecast. If you want Wirecast, you simply hit hit that banner ad and you can get it for free. Now, if you go looking for it, a lot of people have messaged me and say, I only see the, the free, the paid version. There definitely, definitely is a free version um, and you can access it through your, your actual YouTube channel. What you wanna do, so what you're gonna upload the, the Wirecast and after you have it uploaded, you just wanna go down here um, and you have a few options. If you have a thumbnail for your video, you can put it in right here. So the next here is the bitrate. Now, when we go down to the bitrate, here's what you have to remember. Uh, with running a live event, uh, you're, you're actually using Wirecast um, is, you're telling Wirecast, I mean, you're telling Google that Wirecast is actually your webcam. So as the video runs through Wirecast, YouTube Live is gonna pick it up as it's an actual webcam. Now, because depending on the speed of your computer, depending on the speed of the internet, as the video runs through Wirecast, it can tend to run a little choppy and skip. Now, if you have a very low internet speed and maybe your computer doesn't have a lot of processing power, uh, you're probably going to want to go with a lower resolution in your video. Uh, here's what I say. If I'm trying to rank a video for a product or something like that or you know, for a local business or for an Amazon product, I want the quality to be good, but it doesn't have to be like exceptional. Right? People aren't going to be putting this on their 1080p TV and watching my videos. Um, so I want it good enough that it looks good. It doesn't doesn't skip. I'd rather have lower resolution than have a skipping video. Uh, so you know, usually I'll do I don't know. You know, I'll probably start out by trying 480p. I have a pretty good computer and fast internet. Um, you know, if I was in, in Costa Rica doing this, I'd probably be down here. I also, in the videos, um, in the YouTube section, I show you how you can actually run this on a VPS and uh, get actually really good processing uh, power and uh, internet speed. And, you know, if, you're, if you do have that problem in your country or your, your area, that's one way you can overcome it. Um, so anyway, so we're going to hit that. I'm going to do 480p. Then we come down here, we're going to select the encoder, we're going to go with Wirecast. You're going to see there's a whole list of instructions, but I'm going to go through, through them right now for you. Okay, so here we are in uh, Wirecast, and the first thing we want to do is we're going to go to Output. Right up here, and we're going to go to Output Settings. What we have to do is we have to connect Wirecast to our YouTube channel. So we're going to hit Authenticate. And what's going to happen is it's going to bring up our YouTube channel. Okay, so what's going to happen is it's going to bring this box up. And, you know, if you're on a Windows machine, it's going to bring up another browser. And it's going to ask you to log in. Uh, so this is our channel. So we're going to just click this and we're going to log in our channel. And this is going to connect Wirecast. Now, what if you do this and, you know, a, a different channel comes up here? Um, you know that you know like maybe you have different Gmail logins and you don't see yours just simply go to the main Gmail go here sign out and then sign in to your 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 Gmail account that's connected to the channel that you want to do your live event on if that makes sense so since we're connected I'm just gonna hit that and we're gonna hit accept here's our event title here Okay, here's the bit rate or, or the quality of the video that we're going to be running through um, and the event. Okay, so once that's all hooked up, all put in here, you have to make sure you go here and press OK. It's very important um, that you press OK. If you're on Windows, sometimes that, that in the Windows machine, that window right there will pop up behind Wirecast. So you just have to move Wirecast and make sure you see it and then click OK. Now the next thing we want to do is upload our video to Wirecast. So we're going to go here to File, we go here to Import Media, and we're going to choose our video. And this is the video that we're going to use right here, Anti-Aging Serum. 
and you're going to see it's going to pop up right over here. So now once the video is uploaded right here, we want to test it, okay, because the way the video runs through Wirecast is how it's going to show up on YouTube Live and how it's going to be recorded because remember, we're telling um, our YouTube that this is our webcam. So it's viewing this as our webcam. So whatever streams through Wirecast, that's that's how it's going to be recorded. So simply we turn this on and we test it. So there's Mike. All right, this is Mike Long and I'm here with Tim Schmidt. He's the inventor of uh, Elite Serum. Got that uh, right here. I don't know how well you can how well you can see that comes in this uh this Okay. Uh, so that quality looks looks good enough for what we're doing. Um, it really matches the quality of the video that I have. Um, it it's not skipping, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna just leave it as is. Now, there's a couple of things I want to show you. If you notice, I w I hit this and then I hit this blank shot, and it actually you know shut the video off. You can't cannot pause the video with Wirecast. It's actually a live stream. So what you have to do is you have to run the video through and then you'll have to go back and you'll have to trim the front and trim the back. I'll show you how to do that. But if the video is just a couple of minutes long. It's not a big deal. But since this video is, is you know, 15 minutes, what's going to happen is if I click this again, a nice container, it's, a little bit it's not going to start from the iPhone. beginning and I can't and start it from the beginning. That's a leaf so, serum. And, so I'm going to uh, remove it. Tim, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we're, we're investigating leaf serum. I'm going to remove it from here and then I'm going to have I'm just going to add it again. Now I already started. I already know it works. So I'm not I'm not going to uh, do anything else. I'm going to leave it on this blank this blank shot right here. Okay. So next thing we want to do is press uh, stream. Okay, this is very important. Um, if you forget to press stream, you'll get an error in your YouTube. So now we're, it's all set up that it's, it's ready to start streaming. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is go back into YouTube Live. And if we've set everything up correctly and we go to the live control room, we should get a blue button right here. Now, you may get, if you get like a red um, banner here it says uh, not connected correctly you just want to go back to your lot um, go back to Wirecast make sure you've authenticated everything correctly make sure your, your stream is on sometimes it's just um, a glitch and you know, just run through those steps again and you should be able to get to where you're gonna get this blue button now if you want you can preview it here I'm not gonna do that I don't think it's necessary but here's something I want to show you the live event is already set up, okay? So it says it's going to be starting soon, right? We said we want to start at 11. It's 11 o'clock now, um, so it's 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 waiting. This is actually a live channel. So if you wanted to set up this live event, for example, and then you wanted to embed this live event on um, different blogs you have or PBNs before you run it, you can just go to this share section you go to embed and you can actually put this embed code on some of your 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 blogs and as it goes live it'll run live um, on that blog but you know um, we're not going to do that right now but so I'm going to just simply go here I'm going to hit preview I'm gonna press OK and what it's doing right now it's going to prepare the live stream Okay, so we see it's prepared. Now it's going to say start streaming. We see we have a good down here. We have a good health, everything else. So we're going to start the streaming. And when we hit um, start streaming, it's going to start recording whatever is coming through that, uh, whatever is coming through our wirecast. Now it takes a second. Boom, now it's starting. So what I want to do is. I want to go down and I'm going to just hit this right here. All right, this is Mike Long and I'm here with thank you so much for joining us and I will see you soon. 
So just so you guys are not confused, um, I actually paused the running of this video. It's 15 minutes. I paused it after a few seconds and then I restarted it right at the end. So that's why it looks like the video is only like 30 seconds. But I actually let it run through um, and then I restarted the re recording. Okay, so you can see there the video ended. Um, I paused it because it was a long video and then I, what I did is I went over here and I hit this blank shot um, and it's just this blank screen. And uh, once it ends, because what will happen is, is if you don't do that, the video will just loop and it'll start again from the beginning. So what we want to do is then go back. Now it's still streaming, it's streaming that blank shot and we want to hit stop streaming. Okay, then once we hit stop streaming, what we can do is uh, we just go over to the, the view watch page and we go over to the video and we're going to see here is the video and you got to let it run through a little bit. Actually quite a nice container, it's a little bit like when you open an iPhone. And there it is. Okay, so we see you have the video uploaded. Now if we go back to our YouTube channel, if we go to videos right away, we're going to see no videos found uh, because it's going to take you know a few minutes for the the live event to actually go into the video section so I'm gonna pause this video and I'll show you what the next step is once the video populates here in the video section okay so it's been about I don't know about five minutes and we can see here is the video so it showed up so we're gonna do a quick edit on it so we're just going to go to video, we're going to go to edit. Okay, so it hasn't populated any thumbnails yet just because it, it's so new. It'll populate the thumbnails on, in, in a few minutes. Uh, I'm not so worried about that right now as um, what I want to do is go in and actually trim the video. So we're going to go into enhancement. We're going to go to trim. Okay, and what we want to do is we just want to trim out that front part there where it says live stream, right? And we want to get right to the beginning. Okay, let's try it right there. So if we go here, let's see what that looks like. All right, yeah, that's fine. And we can even take it a little closer. We can do it like that. Schmidt, he's the inventor. Mike Long, and I'm here with Tim. And then, so we're going to do the front, and then we're just going to come back, and we're going to do the back, okay? So we know it ended. That's fine right there. we just leave it like that. I don't care if that hangout on air is on the back. I hit done. Mike Long, and I'm, okay. Long, and I'm here with Tim. Right. It starts perfectly. And then you want to make sure that you hit save. Once you hit save, um, it's going to save the video. And we're going to see there, it's, it's editing and it's in progress.